There's gonna be a fight, 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 fight tonight We're gonna fight, 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 fight for women's rights It's gonna be a fight, 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 fight tonight We're gonna fight, 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 fight for women's rights And welcome to the Fight for Women's Rights Battle Against Patriarchy. I am T. Erica, your host, and I will be fighting against Master Patriarchy on January 22nd. In this video series leading up to the event, I am speaking with the most ama amazing women that I can find who are advocates for women and creating change in this world, helping to ensure world peace and a better society for all. Today I'm meeting with Eileen. Eileen, introduce yourself and tell them exactly why you believe you're a good fit for this series. Tiarica, this is amazing. And I'm just sorry that we can't all be in a big room together. Can you imagine what that energy? Wow. Would be? Yes. Oh, man, that would be great. So I'm an author. I am an international keynote speaker. I've done a TED talk. I wrote a book all around making women's lives in the workplace better. That's my entire focus is trying to help people change workplaces so that they actually work better for women. They've never really worked for us. And I struggled with that throughout my career. And I think it's time that we really examine some of the workplace structures and systems and reinvent them. Which workplace structures and systems do we need to focus on most? What is your number one priority? What do you, what do you think needs to change? Yeah, so you told me we only have 15 minutes, so this could be a long conversation, but it's really around, people talk about work-life balance, and I hate that because I think that that's an unattainable goal, but I think if we look at the unpaid labor that we require of women, both inside the workplace and outside the workplace, there's a severe imbalance whether or not we're partnered. It happens, we are the ones that are asked to volunteer for special projects at work. I work a lot with the employee resource group leaders, particularly in the women's leadership group. So many of those roles, those people that are running those groups are unpaid labor. It's not part of their job responsibilities. It's not something that gets factored into their promotion and their bonus plans, and yet they do it. That's one example. We have to really look at who's doing work for what and how are we paying people to do the things that are really creating the change and advancing women in our organizations. Wait, are you saying that most of the people who are driving these organizations and the great initiatives are women and that they're not being paid to do it? They're volunteering, why? Yeah, well, because it's sort of a nice to have in a lot of organizations and it's, the people who want to see those changes are stepping up and doing it without getting paid to do it because the change is what's more important to them than getting paid for it. Every time I come into an organization, that's the first question I ask is, are your people running your ERGs, your employee resource groups, are they getting paid? Is that something that factors into their annual review? And very often the answer is no. Oh my goodness. So we're women trying to be the good Samaritan, the saviors, the martyrs, and we're actually driving profits for these companies for free because we want to feel like we're being a good person. Well, we want to make a contribution, right? And, and women, when women start businesses, when women step into things outside of their paid role, they're doing it because they want to make changes. They want to improve the workplace for other people, themselves included, but they also want to have an impact that far outlasts their own career. Oh my goodness. Well, tell me a little bit about the pandemic and what have you seen that's made it more than clear than ever about women's equality? Have you seen anything since the pandemic? Yeah. I mean, I think we've seen, when was the last time, uh, Tiarica, you've ever wanted to invite all of your coworkers all of your clients into your living room, right? So we're in a place right now where that blur between home and work is completely vanished. There's no separation. 
And I think for so many women whose children were suddenly home from school, they were managing a completely new platform for their children's education. A lot of them were managing a completely new platform for their own work lives. A lot of people were forced to work from home where before this they were not generally working from home. And it was a confluence of stressors and learning curves that they couldn't really offload to anyone else. They had to take it all on themselves. And I think the expectation for being always on is got even larger because you were never away from your work. You were never away from your desk and from these cameras and these Zoom meetings. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying that women's inequality was more evident during the pandemic because now they're doing double duty. Exactly. And, and even if they were partnered, that share of responsibilities was not equal at all. I get a lot of very well-intentioned men who say to me frequently, I help out at home. I do the same amount of work as my partner does it in the home. I take care of the kids. I drive them to school. I do the weekend activities. And my question that I always ask them that I think highlights where the disparity is, is what's your child's shoe size? Ooh. Because every woman knows the answer to that question. And that's an answer that's changing frequently, right? As your kids are growing, and a lot of men struggle to answer that accurately. And it's just to high, it's not to embarrass anybody. It's just to highlight that there's a different level of maintenance that women have for keeping the home running and keeping things happening that we offload from our partners, or if we're not partnered, that we're constantly keeping on top of and maintaining. What would be interesting, I would love to know for you, you talk about equality in the workplace and I want to know what, can you paint a, pic a picture for us of what equality in the workplace looks like outside of the, the pay gap? You know, we know, we all know that that is at the forefront of what we're fighting for, but outside of that, what can we look forward to once equality in the workplace is actually achieved? Yeah, I mean, I think all the time of the Ruth Bader Ginsburg line where you know, she said, somebody asked her, well, how many women will be enough on the Supreme Court? And her classic answer was when there are nine, because there were always nine men, at least since we've had nine people on the Supreme Court, and nobody ever questioned that. So her idea of equality is having women in those same seats that men have always occupied, right? I don't think we're going to ever get to, nor am I sure that we want to have a workplace that is completely run solely by women. But I think when we start to see women getting up to that C-suite, getting into more of the strategic roles. So my company ran what we call the Leadership Diversity Index a few years ago, and we looked at the Fortune 50. And we looked at who had those positions of power and influence. And we looked at the boards of directors and we looked at the C-suite executives. And we looked at how many women, how many people of color and how many women of color occupied different roles. If you had fewer than 50% of, I'm sorry, it was if you had fewer than 25% of your executive suite were women and one of them occupied the chief human resources role, you actually had points taken off your score because that's the role that a lot of companies plug the women into, right? But we wanna see women in roles like your chief financial officer, your chief operating officer, outside of just your CEO, right? We, we had two companies in the Fortune 500 that simultaneously had a woman as CEO and CFO, only two. Yeah. Right now, I feel like I want to do something. I want to jump up. <laughs> I want to take action. But okay, maybe I can't specifically, but maybe some of the women who are watching can. If yeah. you are a woman in the workplace right now, what what are you asking us to do? What do you? What can we do? What can, how can we take action, even in a small way, to bring about equality in the workplace? What's your advice, Eileen? Yeah. So, Tiarka, now you know why I don't sleep at all anymore because I'm constantly jumping up with ideas and things, and I, my brain never stops. 
The, the strongest thing that I always, always recommend to my clients, to the companies that I work with and the individuals is go from being a mentor to other women, and this applies to men and women. Don't just mentor women, sponsor them. Actively sponsor women. And what I mean by that is put yourself and your political professional capital on the line for people. Find people who are strong, talented, and overlooked and elevate them using the power and the influence that you have in the organization. Sponsorship can be incredibly transformative for anyone in their career, but particularly for women who aren't invited into the same rooms, who don't have access to the same conversations and whose names are not put on the table with the frequency for the promotions and the assignments that men are. That for me transforms an organization. And I also challenge my clients to make sponsorship a requirement for anyone in the path to promotion. No one should ever get promoted into management or higher if they've not actively and visibly sponsored other people in the organization, particularly people who don't look like them, that don't love like them, that don't move through the world like them. That's that's what's going to change our workplaces. Oh my gosh, I have goosebumps. That is a great idea. That's a great, that is amazing. That is, that that is, okay, let me calm down. That is, that is, that is what we need. We need those who are moving up to be actively involved in the promotion of others. That's a sign of leadership. That's what leadership is. Oh my gosh. That's exactly what it is. I'm a little flustered. I, I I need to calm down. And thankfully, we're at the end of this interview. I want to thank you so much, Eileen, for coming on and for sharing your insights and getting me all excited and riled up. I hope that everyone in the audience is doing the same, is feeling the same way that I feel right now. Eileen, how can we find you on social media? Where can we find your work? How can we support? Excuse me. You can find me on Twitter at EEM Scully. You can find me on Instagram at The Rising Tides Consulting. You can find me on Facebook at EEM Scully, Eileen Scully. I accept everybody on Facebook and LinkedIn is also EEM Scully. Awesomeness. Well, so excited to meet with you and have you on today and excited to share your enthusiasm with everyone else about workplace equality. Everyone out there watching, make sure you get in touch with Eileen and continue to watch this series for more awesome women doing great things in the world for the advancement of our society. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you, Tierra. It's gonna be a fight, 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 fight to